What's up guys? Welcome back to Be A Metal Fabricator. I'm Tubal Kane. Today we're working on this fender right here for the 1950 International Metro that's behind me. We're going to be welding these three sections together. We got two weld seams. This one right here I've already cut and fit. This one's about ready to tack. We're going to have to cut and fit this side too. I'm going to be also doing a little bit of tips and tricks on the TIG welding and how I TIG weld this thin sheet metal so you might want to stick around. But let's just jump right into the video. So before I start any welding, I always make sure that my tungsten is clean. Now, the way I clean my tungsten is with this little Harbor Freight grinder right here. This is dedicated to my tungstens. Nobody shoves any type of material in this other than tungsten. Now, when grinding a tungsten, what you want to do is you want to grind vertical to the wheel. You never want to grind horizontal because it throws off the electrodes. You get a cleaner weld when you grind vertical. So let's go ahead and clean this tungsten. Okay, there we go. That's ready to go. Now, I always use two different kinds of tungstens depending on what I'm doing. Now, you got 2% Thor rated and 2% serrated. These could both weld mild steel or stainless steel. The difference is with serrated, you can also weld aluminum and you cannot do that with Thor rated. Thor rated is red, serrated is gray. All right, let's talk about filler rod real quick. I got two types of filler rod here in the shop. I got E70-2 and ER70-6. Now, I'm sure there's some differences between the two, but for what we're doing right here, whichever one we use, it ain't gonna make a lick of difference. The only thing I'm really concerned about is the thickness of the rod. This is 16th inch thick, and this is 035. Now, I pulled this right out of the MIG welder and straightened it up. What I usually do is take the excess that I get from swapping out a roll, and I straighten these pieces out and make these beautiful filler rods. Now, the reason I like this thin stuff is because when you're using the thicker stuff, you tend to start welding and it wants to glob up, you gotta melt it in. But with this thinner stuff, it just welds really nice, it melts really easy, you can have a nice small bead, you can grind that bead off and planish it, and it just comes out beautifully. So let me show you how I straighten this out real quick and then we'll get to tacking this up. Okay, so first thing I do is I grab an end of, here, of this right here and I clamp this side to the table. This other end, I just put a bend in it, like so, and I stick that bad boy in the drill. I just pull that wire straight, and then I let the drill do the rest. Okay, when it snaps, that's when you know it's straight. I just apply slight pressure, not too much, and I just let it snap. Once it snaps, I just come through, cut it up, and you got some beautiful TIG weld rod right there. All right, the next thing is your shielding gas. This is 100% argon. That's what you want to run in your TIG welder. Some guys use helium. I don't know, I've never tried it. But as far as your regulators go, obviously this is tank pressure, this is line pressure. In your line pressure, you want 15 to 25 CFH. We're running about 18 to 20, which will do just fine for us. It all depends on the cup that you're using, but that's what we're gonna do today. So anyways, let's get to welding. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and tack this thing. I always tack before I weld, just in case I gotta cut something off and redo it. Now, before I even start tacking, I always fill the panel to where these two panels are the most level. That's where my first tack goes. So it feels like right here is pretty good. I'll tack right in this area right here. Now, with this thin filler rod, a lot of times what happens is it starts to ball up when it hits the heat. That's okay, as I'm heating my base metal first, that little ball, I'm gonna try to drop it on the base metal and just do the old drop a glob trick. So let's do that. What you wanna do is you wanna leave your shielding gas flowing over that tack 
so that it doesn't oxidize right away. I usually have a hard time doing that because I'm so impatient, but that's a good rule of thumb. Now that we got that tacked, I'm going to go ahead and take off my clamp. And these parts that I was filling around that aren't level, we're going to get those fairly level now with the hammer and dolly. So, what I like to do... I like to put my dolly on the back side of that tack and stretch these tacks out. Okay, that feels pretty good. I'm still going to use my clamps. I'm just going to put them in a different spot now. And that bad boy right there. All right, let's tack those real quick. Okay, now that we got that one tacked up, we still got to do some leveling from panel to panel on this one. But I want to, I don't want to move this one too much because I have it clamped pretty much where I want it. So we're going to work on this one, getting it cut and tacked. And then after we get this one tacked to where it ain't going to move anymore, we'll go ahead and level these, this sheet metal up from side to side, panel to panel, same on this side, and then we'll go ahead and weld them. The center panel is overlapping this rear panel right here. And the flow, it looks real nice, it feels real nice. And I think that's exactly where I want it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my fine line Sharpie and I'm gonna mark right inside that edge. Now that's marked, I'm gonna take off all my clamps and I'm gonna slide this out. Okay, now we got our cut line right there. All right, I'm just gonna use my die grinder with my cutoff wheel on it, and I'm just gonna cut as close to that line as possible. Alright, to get this to fit up like how I want it, I'm going to have to tack and move this clamp. Tack, move the clamp. So, the best spot I can fill is right here. You start right there. Now i got two good spots, one right below it, one right above it.
Now that we got both of these tacked up pretty good, I'm gonna go ahead and take this off of the wire form buck and lay it on the table. That way I could get my clamps where I need them to and I can hammer and dolly some of this to where it's nice and level from panel to panel, especially on this side. And then we'll go ahead and weld that whole thing up. We're at the point now where I feel comfortable being able to just weld this thing. Now, I'm gonna weld this in one pass. And I had a lot of questions in the comments about why I welded that last patch in one pass. Now, I'm gonna weld this in one pass because I got enough contour here to where it's not gonna warp the entire panel. It's not gonna ruin it. A lot of people were saying you do little welds at a time and let them cool. That's not wrong, you can do that. And a lot of times I do that. Uh, the reason I do that is when there's a flat panel and you put too much heat to it, you basically ruin the panel and you warp the entire thing. That's not going to happen in this case. I'm going to fluctuate my heat to where it's not too excessive. I'm not going to be blowing holes in this thing because my fit is really good. And it's got enough contour to where this panel can take that amount of heat. On top of that, I'm gonna be able to planish this with a hammer and dolly because I have access to the back side of the panel. Uh, a lot of this is going to need some planishing anyways because I got some highs and some lows in this entire panel, so it's not that big of a deal to me right now. So I'm just gonna weld this in one pass and then we'll jump on to the next weld. Now as far as when you're TIG welding, you always want to heat up your base metal first and then dip the rod. Move, dip, move, dip, move, dip, move, dip. Okay, that welded up pretty nice. You can see we got nice consistent heat all the way across and we got adequate penetration on the back side. That's going to planish out just beautifully. So let's go ahead and do this other side here. This is a little bit flatter of a panel, but the same rules still apply in my case. Now that we got that all welded up on both ends, we're going to go ahead and grind these welds on the top side and on the bottom side. So now that we got that ground on both sides, we're going to go ahead and planish this weld and probably a good section wider too because there's some lumps right here from me hammering on it so we start with our magnum sharpie as always and some sandpaper with something straight and we're just gonna sand those highs to expose the lows We got a lot going on here. We got some dark spots that's low where I welded it, got a little high and a little low in here. 
We also got some lows over here. It gets high on that edge of that weld. And this whole panel's like that, so this will probably be the straightest thing on the panel, but let's start hammering dolly in that. All right, so I got my egg-shaped dolly, my slapper hammer. I'm gonna start smacking in these lows to bring those up, which in turn is gonna knock down the highs, so. And I'm watching the footprint. You can see where I've smacked it already. It's leaving a little footprint, which takes off a little bit of that marker. That's how I can track where I'm hitting. Let's hit this with the shrinking disc. You could get these from Pro Shape or Sheet Metal. Ray Shaleen down there in Massachusetts. First thing you want to do is lube it up with the Sharpie. And just keep it flat to the panel. Take our 3M strip disc just to clean that up a little bit. It doesn't really take off any metal, it just kind of sands it a little bit. And now we're going to do the same thing with this side. All right guys, that's about as far as I'm getting tonight with this thing. It's looking pretty good. This fender still needs a ton of work. We still need to do all the flanges and then we got to get it mounted on the vehicle. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys learned a lot. You know, this takes a lot of work and a lot of time to do, but it's super satisfying when it's on the vehicle and you know you've built it by hand. But if you guys like this kind of stuff, please like and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. I got some pretty cool merch, some shirts, some sweaters, a bunch of cool stuff down at the bottom. If you guys like that kind of stuff, it'd help the channel and I'd appreciate it. But until next time, we'll see you later.